in the West Bank in Palestine in the spring of 1947. A Bedouin shepherd named Juma, while searching for a stray goat from his flock, found a cave in the northwestern rim of the Dead Sea. Curious, he cast a stone into the dark cave and he was surprised to hear the sound of breaking pots. So he became even more curious. He went in to investigate and he found several jars of clay. But since it was already getting late and his goats had to be gathered, he decided he would just come back the following day. He excitedly shared to his cousins and fellow shepherds the news or the prospect of finding treasures in those jars of clay. Perhaps some of you have already know or already know what treasures those shepherds were to find. Uh, later we will see that. But for now, I just use this incident to introduce our text about the treasure in earthen vessels. Let's go to our text, brethren. Let's turn with me to Second Corinthians uh, four. We will read verses uh, seven to uh, sixteen. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what has been written, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. In the title, I am using the word worthless, in the sense of unworthy. We are all here by the grace of God alone. None is worthy because no one is sufficient for this ministry. As uh, the Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians 2, 15 and 16, for we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To one, a fragrance from death to death. To the other, a fragrance from life to life. Who is sufficient? for these things. As uh, Pastor Gerald have said, a group of men had come to the Corinthian church who presented themselves as apostles. Uh, Paul describes them as super apostles, but they were actually false teachers working to discredit Paul and his companions. They were questioning his credentials and the fact that he and his companions were being persecuted and suffering many trials uh, is a sign according to them that God does not seem to be blessing them. And uh, many Corinthians have aligned themselves with those super apostles, feeling superior even to the uh, other brethren, even to the apostle Paul himself. And Paul uh, and company have uh, become to them in the eyes of those people as the scum of the world, the dregs of all things. They are looked down upon as an embarrassment to the church, while their new leaders, the super apostles, give the Corinthians a sense of pride since they are so smooth, so persuasive, so wise. So Paul here is defending his apostleship and at the same time, he's correcting their view of the Christian ministry. And I hope even us uh, we will be corrected by the apostle Paul here. Here in our text, uh, we, we will just... Uh, focus our attention on, the, on verse 7. Here, in our text, he is highlighting the glory of the gospel by a description that contrasts its preciousness with the unworthiness and weakness of its bearers. 
treasure in the earthen vessels or in er earthen vessels. It is God who should be glorified in the triumph of the gospel. So let me draw this message from our text. The Christian ministry is characterized by feeble bearers with a glorious gospel. Ang ministeryong kristyano ay nakikilala sa pamamagitan ng mga mahihinang tagapagdala na merong daladala na isang maluwalhating ibanghelyo. The Christian ministry is characterized by feeble bearers with, glorious, with a glorious gospel. I was telling Pastor Noel last night that the points of this last message have been chipped away little by little as the conference progresses. The earthen vessels have, always, have been touched by Pastor Gerard. And uh, the surpassing power was touched by Pastor Noel also yesterday. Uh, thanks to Pastor Mike and Pastor Way that they, they didn't touch the treasure. <laughs> so I still have one point to discuss. <laughs> so I asked Pastor Noel last night, Pastor Noel, ano ba topic mo bukas treasure? <laughs> Naubos na. <laughs> Tabinawan ni Brother Joseph, uh, Brother Joseph told me, Pastor, uh, Pastor Rami, you still have one left to discuss the word in. <laughs> so anyway, to wrap up what they have said, <laughs> just remember, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Uh, let us ponder upon three headings that naturally come up from our text, and then let us ask what should be the attitude of our hearts. Seeing this picture, seeing the picture that Paul had uh, painted here in our text, what should be the attitude of our hearts as we do, as we minister the Word of God? So, one, or first, the worthless vessels, two, the, glor uh, the gospel treasure, and three, the glorious display of exceeding power. So first, the worthless vessels. And by the way, uh, I have eight pages manuscript, <laughs> ten points. <laughs> so, one, the worthless vessels. Uh, Paul's description is instructive here of how we should view ourselves as gospel bearers. Uh, some commentators believe uh, that there is an allusion here to Judges 7, verses 16 to 22, as Pastor Noel have uh, uh, touched uh, a while ago. Uh, it is uh, Gideon here and his 300 men defeated the Midianites' army with the use of trumpets and clay jars with torches inside, which shows by the manner of their warfare. You know, imagine, makikipaglaban kayo sa, sa digmaan. Daladala nyo ay trumpets at saka torches na nasasakluban ng uh, palayok o jars na yari sa putik, uh, clay jars. By the manner and the means of warfare, it clearly shows that the victory was won by the Lord Himself through an obedient army who depended upon and fully trusted His means, even if it defies the logic of man. Imagine 300 men of Gideon defeated 135 strong army of the Midianites, 135,000 rather, <laughs> sorry, 135,000 against 300 men with trumpets and torches uh, inside the clay jars. Surely, it was the Lord who did it. Matthew Henry says in his commentary, his uh, Gideon's method of defeating the Midianites may be alluded to as exemplifying the destruction of the devil's kingdom in the world by the preaching of the everlasting gospel, the sounding that trumpet, and the holding forth that light out of earthen vessels, for such are the ministers of the gospel. 2 Corinthians 4, verses 6 and 7. Here is a good point. Uh, although also being emphasized there, or here in the text, is the easily broken materials of those jars. That's how we are. That's what we are. The materials, the frailty of the containers, they're worthless in themselves. And that is how Paul describes himself and his companions. We know how Paul presents himself as a man. Though he was the apostle so mightily used of God, yet 
he considers himself the chief of sinners, a wretched man, the least of the apostles. He openly talks about his failures and weaknesses. He says in Romans 7, 14 and following, For I do not understand my own actions, for I do not know do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate, for I know that nothing good dwells in me, for I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. That's how he describes himself. It is Paul. This is Paul. And what about us, brethren? And what about the thorn in the flesh? In 2 Corinthians 12, 7, as Pastor Gerald said, it could be something. Uh, perhaps some secret sin he was struggling against. It could be an illness. Or it could be someone, like a person persecuting him. But whatever it was, it made him aware. The purpose is to make him aware of his frailty and his need for God's grace. Isn't it true also of us, brethren? Our weaknesses remind us that we need the grace of God. This is something that we should always bear in our mind. Feeble vessels always needing the grace of God. In our story, when the shepherds made, made their way to the cave, the cave floor was covered with debris, including broken potteries. Along the wall stood a number of, jay, of clay jars, but the jars were insignificant to them. <coughs> what they were interested in were the treasures that they hoped to find in those earthen vessels. As those clay jars were insignificant to the shepherds who were expecting valuable treasures, we also are not the important ones to those who are looking for salvation, brethren, and for those we want to save. It is not us. It is the Savior that we preach that they are interested in. That is important to them. They need to discover the Savior. It is the Savior that should arrest their attention, not our gimmicks, not the songs that we sing. It is the gospel of the gracious, of the glorious Savior, Jesus Christ. It is sometimes the case, brethren, that we stand in the way between Christ and the sinner in our ministry. That is why Christ is not sin, and the sinner is not saved. No matter how great a person we think we are, no matter the eloquence, the giftedness and learning, the self-importance we assign to ourselves is out of place. And it betrays a spirit that is not dominated by grace. This is not also to say that our ministry is insignificant, brethren. We also have to balance this with the fact that we are the vessels, albeit clay and earthen, we are bearers of the gospel treasure. You know, in ancient times, if one is a slave or a prominent person, it is an honor of that slave. And we are slaves of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That is our glory. Slaves of Jesus Christ. Our ministry is important because God intended that faith should come through the foolishness of our message, of preaching. 1 Corinthians 1.21 God was pleased to save those who believe through the foolishness of the message preached. So let, let us have this balance. As vessels in ourselves, we are worthless, unworthy, but our ministry is glorious because of the glorious message we bear. We are earthen vessels with the gospel treasure. That's our second point. Paul says, we have this treasure. The treasure is the gospel. And Paul gives us two descriptions of the gospel in verses 4 and 6 that show us the reason why it is invaluable. First, the glory of or the gospel of the glory of Christ in verse 4. 
the good news is about the glory of Christ in His person and in His work. The glory of His person. In John Owen's book, The Glory of Christ, he works through the various and endless aspects of Christ's glory, which the Christian is privileged to behold. Uh, the, uh, the glory of Christ as God's representative and revelation. We know who our Lord Jesus Christ is, who Jesus Christ is. He, siya yung lubos na kapahayagan ng Diyos. Nung unang panahon, ang Panginoon ay nangungusap sa pamamagitan ng mga propeta, pangitain, etc. Pero itong huling araw na ito, in these last days, He speaks to us through His Son, who is, uh, kung si, siya yung uh, lubos na kaningningan ng kanyang kaluwalhatian. That's the glory of Christ as God's representative and revelation. The glory of Christ in His person as fully God and fully man. The God-man. He's the only fit mediator between God and man. Siya lang yung maaaring maging tagapamagitan sa, pagi, sa, pa, sa pagitan ng Diyos at ng tao. Fully God to represent God. And fully man to stand in our place. He is the uh, mediator. The one mediator between God and man. To deny any one of those two natures is to not have a mediator uh, sa, sa Diyos. To deny His being God, eh walang halaga uh, yung kanyang kamatayan. Sapagkat kamatayan lang yun ng isang tao. So the glory of Jesus Christ as fully God and fully man, pinaninindigan natin yan. Laban sa mga heresiya na si Kristo ay tao lang o si Kristo ay Diyos lang. Siya ay tunay na Diyos at tunay na tao. And the glory of Christ's humiliation. Siya nakataas-taas ang Diyos, sinasamba ng mga anghel, Iniwanan yung kanyang kaluwalhatian. He left His glory. He emptied Himself. Pero hindi nabawasan yung kanyang pagkadiyos. He emptied Himself of His glory. At pumarito para maging lingkod na naghugas ng paa, nung maruming paa, nung mga apostol. Yung kanyang pagpapakababa, kamanghaan natin yan. Nung siya ipanganak, when he was born in a manger, doon sa stable at inilagak sa manger, the angels came down to look at their Lord. Ano to? Anong hiwaga ito? What wonder is this? Yung aming Panginoon ay naging isang sanggol na sumususo sa kanyang ina pag umihi kailangang palitan ng kanyang ina yung lampin. Uh, yung kanilang Panginoon, umiiyak. Kaya hindi tama yung awit, hindi ra umiiyak. Umuuha. Yung Panginoon ng mga hukbo, naging isang tunay na sanggol, walang magawa, tinuruang maglakad ng kanyang mga magulang. Nag-aral. Uh, the knowledge that he gained is from his diligent study of the scripture. When he was quoting scriptures in his ministry, do not think that that is uh, because he was God or he is God. No. Nag-aral siya, sabi ni Lucas, lumago sa karunungan, naging masipag sa pag-aaral was diligent in his study of the scripture. That's why he can quote lahat ng uh, sagot ay galing sa salita ng Diyos. The glory of his exaltation. Uh, let us not also think that the glory uh, he went uh, back to sa langit is the same glory that he had. No. It was Jesus. It was Jesus who was born of Mary. That was exalted. 
the God man who earned that uh, reign or that uh, kingship by his suffering. Wonder the glory of Christ in the Old Testament. He was the expectation of Israel. And the angels long to look. Sabi doon sa, sa unang Pedro, sa 1 Peter 1, 11 and 12, the angels long to look. Kung, nung ipanganak siya, kaya siguro nagbabaan yung mga anghel. It's because hindi nila alam anong nangyayari. The angels learn. The angels also gain a, a more glorious view of their, of their Lord nung siya ay nagpakababa rito. So, uh, the glory of Christ in the Old Testament, pag pinag-aaralan natin yung Old Testament, makikita natin, we can see in the Old Testament the glory of Christ, the expectation, the long-expected Savior of His people. So such is the glory of the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. No other person in heaven, I mean in heaven, no other person in heaven or on earth is like Him. The Father did not become man. And the Holy Spirit also. Shalom. It is the Son of God who became man. Naging tunay na tao. So, ito yung kahalagahan ng kaluwalhatian ni Kristo na nanduroon sa Ebanghelyo. So why do we sometimes blur His glory by what we preach na hindi naman gospel? So ito yung kahalagahan na nauunawaan, nakikita natin ang kaluwalhatian ng persona ng ating Panginoon. And the glory of His work, and particularly His atonement, is being the only satisfaction for sin. The fall of man is such that he cannot do anything to rise from where he has sunk. He cannot atone for his sin. And God cannot forgive him with just an order from his court because he cannot contradict himself. There's no other way for man to be saved except for one who is God to become the God-man and live a perfect life and die as the substitute for sinners. He vicariously kept the law perfectly. And what does it mean, brethren? It means that every second of his waking hours, he has to guard his every thought, his every word, his feelings, his emotions. And you think it is easy? 33 and a half years, every second he has to guard his thoughts so that he will not sin. With all the powers of the devil and his demons ganging up on him so that perhaps he will stumble just once and the salvation of mankind would have failed. It wasn't easy for our Lord. It is not only his death, uh, it is not uh, only in his death that he suffered. In his every waking second, uh, every second of his waking hours, he suffered for our sake. And what about his death? When he atoned for our sin, it pleased the Father to crush him because he was the sin bearer. Did we hear him cry, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? No one in heaven and on earth to comfort him. The desolation and loneliness when he became cursed for us, we cannot fathom. Who knows? For our sin, he has to be forsaken of God, stricken, smitten, and afflicted. There is no event in the history of mankind like the Christ event. Christ's birth, Life of obedience, death, resurrection, ascension, and the descent of His Spirit have such cosmic significance that without His life work, the whole creation would have been groaning forever 
because of the destruction and decay brought about by sin. Take away Christ and the whole creation will be groaning forever because of sin. He is that precious brethren to the whole creation, even to the angels. So what we bear is the gospel of the precious saving knowledge of the person and work of Jesus Christ. And secondly, the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. Another description by Paul in verse 6. Ultimately, to know Jesus Christ is to know the glorious perfections of God revealed in his person and work. There is a general knowledge of God in creation. We know that. In Romans 1, 19 and 20 says, For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. The general knowledge. In Exodus 34, uh, 6 and 7, at the request of Moses that God show him his glory, God proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, but who will by no means clear the guilty. Paano magpapatawad yung Diyos na yan kung hindi pala siya magpapawalang sala ng may sala? That was then, before Christ came. In the giving of the law, God is glorious. God's uh, glory is revealed in the law. His glorious perfection, His holiness revealed in the law. John 1, 7, John 1, uh, 17 says, For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Now we have the most glorious revelation of God in the person of His Son. Is He merciful and gracious? Look at His Son on the cross. Is He abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness? Look at Christ dying on the cross. For God shows His love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And what about His righteousness and justice? Again, look at the cross. For it was to show His righteousness at the present time so that He might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus Christ. So the point, brethren, is that in the gospel, we have the most glorious revelation of God, not in a mere conceptual knowledge, but in a living relationship with God through Christ and in Him by the Spirit. That is why the gospel that we possess is most precious, utterly invaluable, nothing like it, brethren. When the shepherds went into the cave, what they found inside the clay jars were scrolls wrapped in cloth and greenish with AIDS. Subsequent investigations revealed that what they discovered were manuscripts, some manuscripts of the Old Testament, the first seven manuscripts of the Dead Sea Scrolls. More than 900 scrolls would later be found in those jars in Qumran, manuscripts which were a thousand years older than the then oldest known Hebrew text of the Bible, many of which were written more than 100 years before the birth of Jesus Christ. Bibli biblical scholar William Albright made a claim that the Dead Sea Scrolls were the greatest archaeological find of the 20th century. Scholars say that the Qumran community of whom these cave libraries uh, belong were the Essenes, a sect in Judaism. They obviously were faithful in the transmission of their precious faith, evidenced by the volumes of the scrolls that they have preserved, which by the providence of God have become a great blessing to us as well. Our faith in the veracity of the scripture have been strengthened by the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls. How about us, brethren? How do we see to it that the transmission of our faith to the next generation of our churches will still be faithful to the gospel that the apostle preached? 
How faithful are we to the message we bear to our churches and to the world? Do they see the light of the glory of God in the face of Jesus? And that would be because we treasure the value of the knowledge of Christ. Kanyan ba natin pinahahalagahan yung uh, ating mensahe? Tinuturing ba natin na walang pinakamahalagang mensahe o salita na mapapakinggan yung ating iglesia maliban dito? Yung mga hindi ligtas, yung mga unbelievers, the unbelievers, they need this. Ito lang yung kailangan nila. Ito lang yung kayamanan na maihaharap nila sa Diyos pagharap nila sa Kanya. Christ in the Gospel. Ganun kahalaga. The treasure in earthen vessels like us, full of weaknesses, but our ministry is glorious because of that. So thirdly, make lina lang the glorious display of exceeding power. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. The contrastive description is meant to correct the anomaly of the exaltation of gospel bearers. Inihiram um, umano, sabi ng mga commentators, uh, Paul is borrowing here, oh, the, the image here, from the Roman army. After victory in battle, the plundered treasure, yung mga nakulimbat nila, nasamsam nila, na mga kayamanan, the plundered treasure is carried in jars of clay. Uh, the treasure sparkles uh, na umaapaw doon sa mga uh, vessels habang uh, kanilang ipinaparada, nagniningning yung mga kayamanan na nandoon. At ganun din tayo. Um, sa pananaw ni Pablo, sa kanyang paglalarawan dito, tayo, sa, uh, tayo yung mga lalagyan, mga sisidlan na nagpapalitaw nung kaluwalhatian ng Diyos. The great power referred to here is in connection with the labors of the apostles. All was manifestly beyond human strength. Uh, sila ay pinapersecute kung ano-ano dinaranas ng mga pagsubok at kahirapan. Pero sabi niya, hindi kami nawawalan ng pag-asa. We do not lose hope. We do not lose heart sapagkat yung kapangyarihan, the power, the surpassing power is of God. Much have already been said about the exceeding power of God and of our reigning Lord in our ministry and in the, in the mission of the church. Let us just now dwell on the word to show. Uh, in ESV, yung binasa natin, uh, what we read is from ESV. It is not in the original in the King James Version, that the excellency of the power may be of God. But uh, to show, to manifest, to display is clearly implied. Because the excellency of the power is of God already. It has just to be seen and acknowledged. Kailangan na lang makita. So, yung kapangyarihang gumagawa sa atin ay uh, para makita, may pamalas, may pahayag, Yung kapangyarihang gumagawa sa atin ay sa Diyos. Yun yung layunin. That is the purpose of our uh, being the earthen vessel of this glorious treasure, the gospel treasure, para maka- makita na ang kapangyarihan ay sa Diyos. So, pag limiin natin, brethren, let us ponder upon this, that the purpose of our ministry is to show that it is God indeed who saves. Hindi yung ating mga kakayahan, uh, mahalaga yung naghahanda tayo sa ating mga uh, ministeryo, sa ating mga pinapangaral. It is important that we prepare. We diligently study our text. But after all the preparations, we go to God to display His power by, the, by our preaching, sapagkat yung kaligtasan ng makasalanan ay wala sa atin. It is not us who regen- regenerates sinners. Hindi tayo 
Ang nagtataguyod ng ating mga iglesia, hindi yung kakayanan ng mga pastor, ang siyang gumagawa para sa pagsulong na nga gawain ng ating mga iglesia, kundi yung kapangyarihan ng Diyos. Ano nung ibig sabihin niyan? Kung minsan, tayo mga kapatid, tayo ng mga manggagawa, nanduroon yung tukso, there is the temptation to glory in our ministries. Kapag kalumalapit sa atin, when our members come to us, Pastor, we're blessed. We should watch ourselves, yung ating mga puso, na hindi tayo, it is not us, we should be exalted. It is our Lord. It is He who saves. Siya yung um, nagliligtas. Siya yung gumagawa sa pamamagitan ng kahangalan, ng pangangaral. Yun yung sabi ni Pablo, the foolishness of uh, preaching. Kaya itong bagay na ito, uh, mga kapatid, uh, magturo sa atin, uh, uh, it should teach us to have the meekness of an earthen vessel to let, the sh- uh, to let shine the splendor of the saving appeal of Jesus Christ in the gospel. Siya yung itinatanghal natin. Magkaroon tayo noong kababaang luob na hindi yung ating mga sarili ang naitataas, ang nai-exalt sa ating mga ministeryo, kundi yung kapangyarihan ng Panginoon. At doon din tayo maasa. Hindi natin iisipin na yung ating mahusay na pagpapaliwanag sa Ebanghelyo ang magiging dahilan ng kanilang paglapit kay Yeso Kristo, kundi yung kagandahan ni Yeso Kristo ang siyang naitatanghal, hindi yung karisma ng pastor. It's not the charisma of the pastor that should uh, direct or arrest the attention of our hearers, but it is the gospel. And let the power of God do its uh, work in the salvation, in the regeneration of the sinner. So, sa ating pagbalik, sa ating mga ministeryo, after all that have been said here in this conference, brethren, uh, makikita natin itinanghal yung kaluwalhatian ng ating Panginoon, yung kapangyarihan ng ating Panginoon, at yung ating kababaan yung ating pagiging kasangkapan lamang. Yung mga instrumento, hindi siya ang nagtatamo ng karangalan. It is not the instrument that should be glorified. It is the uh, God behind our preaching. It is the power of the Holy Spirit na siyang gumagawa sa mga makasalanan ng siyang maitanghal. At kumisan, um, tayo rin ay nagkakaroon ng mataas na pagtuturing sa ating mga sarili. Arminian niyang mga yan. Uh, yung iglesia yan, wala yan. Dahil kami reform. That should not be, brethren. It should not be that because we are reformed, we know the doctrines of grace. Pinag, uh, kinukumpara natin, we compare our doctrines or our uh, knowledge with those Uh, of our brethren who are not of the same persuasion that should not be. Uh, minsan, uh, tayo sa ating uh, zeal na ipagtanggol yung ating uh, katuruan, yung ating uh, pinanghahawakan ng mga katuruan, nakakalimutan natin. Hindi yung ating katuruan, hindi yung ating kinabibilangang pangkatin sa Kristyanismo ang siyang dapat maitanghal si Kristo. Si Kristo rin yung kanilang kinikilalang Panginoon. Magtuwid yan sa ating mga pag-iisip. Brother. Let us have the meekness of the Apostle Paul. Definitely, yung, yung mga super apostles eh, at saka yung mga uh, taga-Korinto na sumusuporta doon sa mga super apostles, definitely mali yung kanilang uh, pananaw pero i- i- si Pablo sa kanyang kababaang loob, naabot niya sila sa pamamagitan ng pagtatanggol niyang ito, sa pamamagitan ng pagpapaliwanag niyang ito, kung papaano tayo dapat nagkakaroon ng wastong pananaw, hustong pananaw sa ating ministeryo. 
tayo ay mga kasangkapang lupa lamang ng ating maluwalhating Panginoon. We have the same Lord habang sila ay kumikilala kay Heso Kristo na kanilang Panginoon at tagapagligtas kapwa tayo mga alipin slaves of Jesus Christ lamang na binili ng mahal na dugo ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. So nawa sa pag-uwi natin meron tayong hustong pananaw sa ating ministeryo bilang mga earthen vessels na tagapagdala ng uh, maluwalhating uh, kayamanan na ito ng uh, Ibanghelyo at siya o yung Ibanghelyo ang ating itinatanghal sa ating pangangaral hindi yung ating mga ministeryo o ating mga uh, sarili. So I hope uh, tayong lahat ay pinagpala ng mga uh, mensaheng napakinggan natin dito sa conference na ito with renewed zeal and enthusiasm and love for the Lord tayo babalik sa ating kanikaniyang mga iglesia at ang ating layunin ay ipamalas, itanghal ang kapangyarihan ng ating Panginoon na tagapagligtas. Siya ang tagapagligtas, hindi tayo. Tayo dumulog sa Panginoon sa panalangin. O aming Panginoong Diyos, kami po'y nagpapasalamat. We thank you for this conference. We thank you for the opportunity to again look into your words at magkaroon kami, Panginoon, ng hustong pananaw sa aming mga ministeryo. Sa, aming, sa amin, marahil ay merong mga napapagod na, nawawala na ng uh, pag-asa sa mga kinakaharap na kung anumang mga problema sa ministeryo, nawa Panginoon na panumbalik ang aming sigla, na panumbalik ang aming pag-asa at pagtitiwala sa Ibanghelyo sapagkat Ikaw ang gumagawa sa pamamagitan ng aming mga uh, ministeryo, Panginoon. Kami mga kasangkapang lupa lamang sa iyong mga kamay at itinatanghal namin sa salibutan, sa aming mga iglesia, sa mga dumadalo, sa aming mga uh, gawain, ang maluwalhating Ibanghelyo ng Panginoong Heso Kristo, the glorious gospel of our gracious God. Panginoon, dalangin po namin na sa aming pagbalik sa aming mga kanikaniyang iglesia, nawa ikaw magpala sa bawat isang iglesia, kami mga kasangkapan mo lamang, Panginoon, umaasa kami sa iyong biyaya, sa iyong uh, pagtustos sa amin ng aming mga pangangailangan at nawa ang mga natutunan namin dito ay maibahagi namin sa aming mga tinuturuan at sama-sama, Panginoon, uh, kami na mga kasangkapan mo gamitin sa pagsulong ng Ibanghelyo dito sa aming bansa. Kami nagpapasalamat. We thank you, Father, for the messages that have been brought here by our brethren from other uh, countries, Pastor Gerard, Pastor uh, Wayne, and also our uh, Pastor Noel. Thank you, Panginoon, Pastor Mike, sa aming uh, mga kapatid na ito na naghatid sa amin, nagdala sa amin ng mga mensaheng may uuwi namin sa aming mga Uh, kongregasyon. Salamat po Panginoon naway manatili sa aming mga puso ang mga natutunan namin dito at pasiglahin mo Panginoon ang iyong iglesia sa aming bansa. Maray po salamat sa mga kapatid na naririto. Ingatan mo ang bawat isa sa pag-uwi sa kanikaniyang mga iglesia. Pinupuri ka namin at ikaw nawa ang siyang patuloy na maluwalhati sa iyong iglesia dito sa aming bansa. Ito'y dalangin namin sa pangalan ng aming Panginoong Isokristo. Amen.